Welcome to Season 4 of E-Commerce Fastlane. This podcast helps resilient entrepreneurs thrive with Shopify. And now on to Episode 170. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Today's episode is brought to you by High Conversion Recommend, powered by Amazon Personalize. They help medium to large Shopify merchants boost engagement, increase conversions, and most importantly, grow new revenue with the same product recommendation AI that's used on Amazon.com. When your visitors can't quickly discover the right products, they leave and they go to a competitor or a big marketplace, which really explains why on average, 90% of your online visitors never find a product or add an item to the shopping cart. High Conversion Recommend is unique. They use visitor actions, context, and Amazon's own recommendation algorithms to generate ultra-relevant, personalized recommendations all in real time. You know, and the results are proven. Shoppers who engage with product recommendations are known to produce more in revenue per visit compared to those that do not. Because conventional recommendation apps train algorithms with existing customer data, the impact is limited to your smallest traffic segment, about 10% of your visitors who are returning buyers and lookalike visitors. With High Conversion Recommend, you can benefit from Amazon's session-based personalized recommendation engine using live visitor actions and context to learn buying signals. This unlocks revenue potential from your largest share of visitors, up to 90% of your so-called cold traffic who would otherwise never buy anything. So I highly recommend install High Conversion today. Take them up on their offer. They have a seven-day product recommendation challenge. They believe they can produce 100% more revenue per visitor in just one week with the use of Amazon's product recommendation algorithms. So head on over highconversion.com and mention your e-commerce fast lane listener and you'll also get an exclusive 20% off their annual plan. Well, hey there, it's Steve and welcome back to the e-commerce fast lane podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. If you're an ambitious, lifelong learner, you're definitely in the right place today. New episodes are available twice weekly with your favorite podcast players like Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. You can also stream current episodes, including a very relevant back catalog. I think there's some 170 episodes, I think, that are available. You can go to ecommercefastlane.com and you can stream them there. Lots of offers, show notes, all the details are there. So in today's episode, my guest is Ty Chapman, who's the co-founder and head of product from Monster Apps, and they are an app developer It's called Monster Upsells, and they're a Shopify upsell app, and what they do is they help stores increase their average order value in a very unique way without using a lot of these spammy offers that we see. So it's very interesting how they do it. Their UI and their customer experience is very unique. It's a great conversation. There is a ton of learnings. Make sure you also listen through to the end of the episode because there's an exclusive kind of listener-only bonus. So hi, Ty. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Hey, thanks, Steve, for letting me on the show. I've been looking forward to this for a while now. Yeah, absolutely. I know our time zones are quite unique. Are you being overseas? I'm in on the West Coast in Canada. And where are you located? A sunny coast, um, Queensland, Australia. It's, it's 20 past 12, 20 p- minutes into the morning. Yeah, well, I'm really glad you're here. Thank you for being so responsive to get this recorded because I know that just these time zones are kind of a challenge. But, you know, I think where there's talent and where... 
you know, we just need to kind of share the opportunities that are available around the world. It's not just what's going on in America and Canada. There's lots of great opportunities out here to help Shopify brands to, you know, improve efficiencies and just grow revenue and loyalty. And that's kind of why you're here today. So let's dig in a bit about the Monster Upsell app because I think it's important to maybe understand on a high level first what the app does and the problems that it solves for Shopify store owners. Cool. Let's get into it. Yeah, basically, we created Monster Upsells as a solution for stores that care like deeply about their brand credibility and their customer lifetime value. And we know how important customer lifetime value is. It's, it's stores that really care about their customer lifetime value, but still want to optimize every single customer visit for high revenue. The entire solution is built into a cart drawer that feels and looks like it's 100% integrated with your store with like snazzy upsell campaigns that are tailored to what has been added to the cart. Are there any key problems that maybe this cart is doing? Because I think there are some key differences, I think, between what we're going to call kind of an upsell solution that's in the cart. And it is quite snazzy. I've had a look at it. It's very unique how it works versus maybe some solutions that are more of a post-purchase solution. This is actually live as part of the checkout flow. So let's talk about some of the, I guess, some of the key problems that the that the app is solving. Yeah, sure, man. I actually created this for to solve one of my own problems, to be honest, with one of my own Shopify Plus clients. Yeah, so it solved my own problem. They needed a solution. Uh, and this is this is some of the things I was trying to, I was coming up against when I was working with their marketing team. And yeah, I'll talk about that a bit later, I think. But um, yeah, with the problems we come up against with, sorry, the problems that we basically can overcome with this app is that, here we go, upsells can often be salesy. You know, like they can just be too salesy. You hit a site and there's countdown timers, there's offers expiring soon, there's a new product page and discount heavy deals. And like basically you're kind of devaluing your brand or your products when you are using those kind of things. You got to think about like walking to a retail store, you know, you don't want to be talking to that salesy guy who wants to sell you every single thing and just close the deal today to hit his targets that's kind of one of the angles that we've kind of um taken and then the second thing is pre-purchase so pre-purchase is basically anything any upsell that's before the checkout there's other there's post-purchase so i'll just explain to the audience and that's that's kind of where we sit so pre-purchase upsells often interrupt the buyer journey which can actually be a big no-no in like the conversion optimization world you know you got to be careful you don't want to add more steps to a customer journey before they hit the checkout. You think about it, you hit add to cart, you don't wanna be punched in the face, you know, with this pop-up that just goes crazy and timers and things. The third thing we go after is, look, most existing upsell solutions don't cater for a returning customer base. That's a big one, we, we kind of stumbled into that. But basically, if, if you're not optimizing your upsells, for a returning customer base, you're damaging your reputation long term. You know, if you want customers to come back and you're focused on lifetime value, like bigger brands, or you've got big catalogs and you want to build a relationship with your customer, you've got to be thinking about what are they going to do the next time they come? Are you going to give them this same big 60% off deal that got them over the line last time? Or are you going to offer something that's kind of evergreen? You know what I mean? Well, that's great. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for for sharing that. I think that kind of at least sets the stage a bit about kind of the problems you're solving and the kind of uniqueness around the solution. Like I said, some of the stores that I've seen that have it added, one I know we're going to talk about a little later, it's very interesting how the cart drawer actually works. And it's, it really is a very intuitive way of, you know, just sharing some opportunities of, hey, you're almost over the line now when it comes to, to shipping or to get free shipping or, hey, you can add on some extra products. And uh, nice how the cart kind of opens and closes. It's very, very unique. So I love it. I love it. So let's pivot a bit over to the founder's journey because I think it's always important. So we understand the problems you're solving, but it's also, it's nice to understand, I guess, the people behind the product and, and their why. And I also believe believe that most founders typically are not building product. You said it was purpose-built based on another plus brand, and that was the problem that you were trying to solve as a developer and as a marketing partner for another plus brand. And that's kind of what kind of, I guess, was the catalyst to kind of get get rolling on this solution. But sometimes I believe that it's not just, hey, I want to have a SaaS company and I'm looking for MRR. I'm looking for this monthly recurring revenue. Usually there's a lot more to the story and the founders and their journey than just, I want to make recurring revenue. They're, like you, you truly are. I think the value exchange is, is going to be pretty wide now where, you know, for a very small amount of money, the upside is definitely in the merchant's favor of, you know, of increasing the lifetime 
of value and increasing the average order, you know, the basket size, and these sorts of things. Let's kind of jump into, I understand there's three other founders and I just would love maybe on a high level, what uniquely positions everyone? Because I think everybody has a position, but I think the unity of the four you fellows together are, I guess, are creating this desire and have a certain kind of expertise that I just would love to share with the audience today. Yeah, you're right, Steve. Look, I got three other co-founders, Yub, Med, and Yusuf. <laughs> They're basically my bigger extended family overseas. I've never met the, I've actually never met my team before in real life. <laughs> it's crazy world, this whole social media space, you know. You can build businesses all online, um, which is just crazy. <laughs> it's a strange journey to how I got into SaaS. Like it had, I literally had no idea. I, I, I came from like owning little cafes in Australia me and my wife opening up businesses and little cafes and then moving on from there. I met a guy who sat at the back of my cafe one day and he taught me digital marketing. I quit my job in my cafe that I owned because I was the worst employee. Any entrepreneur is the worst employer. Basically fired myself and I just sat with this guy and he taught me digital marketing. I'm best mates with him today. And then from there, I decided um, I, I wanted to move on from drop shipping. That's what I was doing. And I wanted to start giving back and growing and helping brands. Like that's where my passion was. How do I grow bigger things? How do I somehow give back in the business world? That's kind of where I was moving. And then from there, it just kept snowballing. I started marketing for other e-commerce brands that I just found. I didn't even know you could do this. I built a little agency that no one even, I, I'd never even heard of e-commerce agencies at that time. This is like four, five years ago. Yeah. And from there, I met this one particular brand called Eco Modern Essentials. They're in this interesting time where they were pivoting from a wholesale business to online. They were using, I think it was big commerce at the time. And I jumped on that and I was like, they just wanted to see what I could do because I'd been able to blow up other brands and smaller brands. I was convinced I could do something for them. So yeah, they just gave me a go. Anyway, partnered with that team. Big commerce was just a little too clunky for me. <laughs> I just couldn't get it to work. And I'm like, guys, look, we, we need to take control of the marketing. We, we had developers doing everything. And I was like, no, we're going to need to take control. And then I researched more. And this is when I figured out Shopify was a thing. I actually didn't really know this. So this is just me falling into stuff. I brought them over to Shopify and we've never looked back since. We've scaled since then, since I met them, they were like a five figure store. And now they're a consistent eight figure store with a massive 50% return customer base. Yeah, it's, they, they're absolutely killing it. That story, the reason why I tell that is that exact um, journey is what led me to wanting to create this app because I needed to solve a problem for the Shopify Plus store that really cared deeply about their customer lifetime value. And um, they didn't want to use any of the upsell solutions on the market they really didn't we tried so many different ones and they just kept turning down even if it made them more money they still said no to it because they wanted to think long term about their products so yeah i came up with this idea and i reached out to one of my mates who's yusuf i've mentioned him before he just taught me from afar just watching some videos that he'd uploaded and taught digital marketing and things like that and I just reached out, I'm like, I, I knew he had some apps that he'd built. I'm like, I wonder if he can help me and maybe fund it because I didn't really have the funds at the time. <laughs> maybe he can fund it and he can do this and I'll be the ideas guy and I'll make it all work and pull it together. We got his developers who are business partners as well, Ayub and, and Med. And basically that's where we're at today. Like we, we launched about six months ago and look, we thought it was going to work well. I knew it was going to work well for stores but it's just exceeded our expectation. It's been crazy, yeah. You know what's interesting about about that story, thanks for sharing it, is that in a, and it's a typical kind of business strategy that you know you always talk about things that you do well and kind of outsource the rest. You have to know what your strengths and your weaknesses are. And so it's very clear that you kind of know what you do well, but it's very interesting. You're open to learning from other people, but also let people stay in their lane and let them do what they need to do well. And I think probably your other founders all appreciate the fact of kind of what you do, same as, as what you appreciate what they do to keep the product going and, and, and just the complexity that go along with the programming and, and just that upside and then just some of the, but maybe on the other side, you're more customer facing and you're actually helping finding brands and then and getting case studies in order and then helping with this, you know, I think you have a public roadmap and these, these kind of any ways that we can kind of improve the product. So it sounds like each person has their own distinct role. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah, I just like to be cl as close as I can to partners or stores um, that are using our app as much as I can. Obviously, as we grow, it gets a little bit harder and harder. We've got a support team now who's just expanded the family. 
We're on support 24 seven pretty much, but I try to be on there and help stores as much as I can. Not, not just in like upsell capacity. I love just literally just helping stores. <laughs> so you mentioned about the Shopify plus store that you were kind of helping out. Are there any specific strategies that you have used on that store to help them grow that you believe could be of value to the listeners today? Let, maybe let's talk about one of the KPI. Let's talk about you know lifetime value, like customer, like a CLV kind of KPI. Is there anything that, that you can share that you can think of that I think could be impactful? Because not everybody's on Shopify Plus today that's listening. I mean, there's 1.7 million Shopify, what we'll call core brands. And there's you know quite a few in the tens of thousands of plus brands that are out there. So I would say the bulk of people, just based on those numbers, are more people on the core platform right now that are trying to get traction, uh, product market fit. Is this an opportunity? I just would love to understand if you have any any ideas about how these kind of early to mid-market brands, what they can do to help them grow and scale with your tool or without, just overall, we'd love to have some strategy. That's kind of where I came in with this business. They, I wouldn't call them ready for taking the leap of jumping into plus probably. They were just committed long-term. They were like, we're going to crush it and we're just going for it, all right? So, but they they, have, they weren't doing massive numbers when we jumped on. The pivotal turning point is when, like, I remember, like, I basically just messaged the team. I'm like, guys, we need to think about this. We need to sit down and start thinking, how do we actually get customers to buy from us for life? And I encourage every business, once you've got a little bit of traction, like you, you kind of know that people want what you've got, start thinking about it. Like not even purchase two or three. It's what is your business going to do in two, three, four years time, you know, or five years time? Is it still going to exist? And then once you start thinking like that, you work backwards and you come up with little strategies. I've got a, I, I do have a few things like treating your customer as people, just not as another sale, Right. Build relationships with them. When you start thinking of customers as actual people, you start literally treating them differently. You start changing the way you communicate to them on different channels. Like advertising doesn't stay super salesy. It, sometimes it kind of sways over to let's, let's just build relationship. And then like fostering relationships. Like here's some of the things. So treating a customer as people, not just another sale. Like can you add value to your customer without them needing to buy from you again? Can you add value to your customers without them needing to buy from you? Like that's, that's a powerful question you can ask. Like, how do you do that? Like digital content, like Facebook lives. We just started playing and throwing these ideas out there. Like we, we don't want to spend a crazy amount of money building relationships with our customers, but how can we create repurposable content? I don't know if that's a word. But yeah, like making like Facebook lives, creating worksheets, educating your people, even like thing outside of the box and having physical workshops in like a, like a building and invite your entire database. But you know, not everyone's going to turn up, but it's just fun and it just creates story and creates relationship. And then the next thing I'm passionate about this, like have a brand mission, have something you believe in that you're actually doing as a business. Like when you're first starting out, you don't have to get all your ducks in order and think about all these things totally. You're just trying to figure out a product really (laughs) and see if people want to buy it. But then once you start moving, have a brand mission. People like I believe people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it, you know. That's one of my favorite quotes by Simon Sinek. He like I really believe that a good brand believes that too a good example of that is basically the essential oil company we started to move away from just selling wellness products to how do we help people live a life of wellness how do we get in the middle of their life how do we take their life to that next level and take them on a journey and that's how we built this brand just to crazy numbers and now we've got people who just they're our customers are our biggest advocates and they just keep coming back and buying more so you've said just and i've jotted some notes down here so treat the customers as people not just another sale so that's building the community and just you know so they're not just a number they really are part of the community definitely agree with you having a brand mission i think that's super key that's the differentiator i think in the marketplace maybe having potentially even like a social or environmental kind of component that goes along with it too like there's you know giving back to the ch- charities and just people just understand that you're not just a faceless company uh, just hoarding profits it's like no overall we're, we're more of a community and we're giving back and so i think that's fantastic and I, I think i'd add one more about making maybe your store and your offers more evergreen i think is interesting does that resonate with you at all oh totally like that's that was another game changer we were 
when we first started out, we were just trying to get sales. Like we were just, let's just turn over some dollars. That's it. And that's what businesses do at the start. <laughs> you just got to figure out if people want what you have. That's just a fact. But then as you, as you progress and as you mature as a, as a company or brand, you've got to start thinking like evergreen offers are super important. Is your customer going to come back and have a good journey on your site? for the second, third, fifth, twelfth time? Are they going to come back and feel like there's this crazy sale that they just, they've been smashed with the first four or five times? It's funny you say that. Like literally, that's pretty much what our app does. And that's what we're trying to do is basically build that solution for you. So let's get into some tactics now. I think people love to understand kind of what others have done. It kind of paves the way and saying, hey, you're right. Maybe that would be a good strategy or a good tactic to, you know, to use your application. So let's talk about, maybe you can share some tips that you can give maybe to some store owners today, like how to maybe craft a great upsell and what sort of campaigns are available. One of the most important things I think is just to literally just keep it simple. Break it down. Like, what are you trying to do? What's what's the real goal? You're just trying to increase the average order value of a cart a little bit and or, or a lot. But the, the thing is, you're just trying to get a message across, right? Uh, and get them to make action. So basically, keep an offer simple. Don't make it complicated. Don't have crazy stuff all over the screens and everything like that. Just make it easy to understand. And then the next thing is, be careful. Like, don't heavily devalue your products if you don't have to. If you're providing enough value and you're communicating enough value, you don't have to do massive discounts. The next thing specifically for our card draw is make rewards achievable. So when it comes to increasing average order value, don't make a massive reward. Like if someone's added a t-shirt to their cart, don't say to get free shipping, you have to add $500 more. Like that, and it's funny I say that, but like I just said that as an extreme example, but people do still push it too far. Like just make it one more click. Look at what you want to do is look at your average order value, right? And then go, okay, well, what's 20% above that average order value and have some kind of offer at that price point. That's basically my suggestion. 20 to 30% above. Yeah, and make it really easy to achieve. And then look, the next thing is you've got to be able to understand the offer with a glance, like in a second. You don't want to lose the customer. You don't want to confuse them. You don't want to send them to another page, which a lot of solutions do. They send them all over the site. And look, we just want to keep them moving towards the checkout and just nudging them everywhere. Uh, and just like a, kind of selling fries on the side, you know what I mean? Uh, on the way as they get there. And the last thing is basically just test, 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 test. Like if, one, if something doesn't work, it doesn't mean that it's all broken. It just means it didn't work and you've just got to try something else. That's the whole story of e-commerce and marketing online, basically. Keep testing. This is really good advice. Thank you for, for sharing a lot of that. I'm, I'm thinking about the different verticals that um, upsells could be effective. I know you've kind of hit home a lot about kind of not being spammy, being on brand, make it easy for the customer to achieve these certain levels. I just, I love one of the, I, one of the stores that I was looking at recently. I love how the drawer opens up and it actually gives people an option in there to maybe frequently bought together and make it very easy in the cart to add another kind of complimentary product to go along with the product that they've added to the cart along with, hey, you've unlocked free shipping. So you feel like you've hit a certain milestone based on the prices in the cart, but you might also want to consider adding this or adding some gift packaging or wrapping or you know, maybe even carbon offset kind of options. There's so many interesting things that can happen in the cart. So I just want to make sure that, because for those listening today, they're going to be, everyone's in a different type of vertical. And is there anything specific that you believe Monster Upsells is really thriving the most with right now? We've had stores from every every walk of life use our app basically. But the ones that have come off the top of my head, like clothing is big. I guess it's a vertical where you, you can browse, you know what I mean? Like you're looking at a few different things. And our app thrives in a, an environment where people like to browse as well. There's clothing, jewelry is another big one. Supplements, wellness, furniture, they're all like the bigger main ones. But we also have like a lot of small stores using it as well. They're just, they're just the big ones. But yeah, as I said, it's, it's, if people want to browse, that's, that's a good clue that our app is going to probably crush for them. <laughs> it's basically brands that just really care heavily about their products and how they look, but still want to increase their average order value. 
All right, so now I kind of understand a little bit more about the solution. So there's certain tactics that kind of make sense about keeping it simple and then making the rewards achievable. And so that part I kind of get. I understand the verticals now. Uh, obviously, clothing, I'm sure half, half of Shopify is probably clothing brands. But jewelry and furniture, I think you mentioned supplements and wellness. I think these are fantastic. And certainly plus stores that are more at scale will certainly see a lot of value in that because just they have enough data to allow you to do some tests to see if, in fact, uh, your solution is working for them. And it's easy to market when you've turned it on and A-B test it on or not. And so I think that's interesting. So what are some of the campaigns now that are built into the Monster Upsell app? Are you able to kind of share some of the more popular ones um, and why people are using them? Yeah, we'll just start at the top. Basically, so one of them we've got is called One Tick Upsell. This is just adding a little bit of some, some, like a, adding a little extra. It's just one little tick that adds like a $5, $6 product. You can, you can experiment, get creative with it, but this is what works. It's like a $5, $6 product. Uh, a lot of people are using like priority processing or insurance. And, and I think you mentioned some before, it was like carbon offsetting and th- you had some good ideas just before you rattled off. But yeah, or like gift wrapping and things like that. It's just this little tick that really does make a big difference in the big scheme of things. But then, so that's one, it's, it's clever, it's fun. And then buy more, save more is just buying multiples of the same product, basically. So it's a, it's a really compelling way to basically say, hey, do you want to buy two of them or three of them? And it's, yeah, it just looks really nice on the car. That's pretty much it. It, it is what it says. And then add to unlock. So we've just a feature basically with add to unlock where it's, it's kind of tiered. So what you can do is have multiple goals so it's like add to unlock free shipping and then add five dollars more to unlock 10 percent off or add three more products to get 20 percent off or something else like that Uh, and we're working on we're going to add gift with purchase in there too by the time someone listens to this gift with merch purchase might be on the end (laughs) of that cool so we're working on that one that's i'm really excited about that and then the frequently bought together this is a really good one. It's it's what probably makes the biggest frequently bought together combined with add to unlock is probably what makes the biggest wins for most stores. Okay. So basically you've got a few different options. We've built in Shopify's recommendation engine into our frequently bought together. So it basically uh, it finds out all of your past history and figures out what to suggest to your customer that other people in the past have purchased together. But then you've also got another option where you can just choose whatever products you want. And people are getting creative with this. So things like mystery products. Say you're buying something and it flicks into the cart, like say a mystery bracelet. Sorry, you're buying one bracelet. And then what you can say is, hey, do you want a mystery bracelet as well? Or do you want a mystery something else? And that is doing really well. It's just a little nugget you can take away. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just doing, yeah, it's just a bit of fun. That's pretty much some of the four main campaigns we've got going. We've got a whole heap coming soon. So gift with purchase, buy X, get Y. So it's a bit more complicated. You can do a lot of tricky things with that. That's pretty much it. But we've got a ton more. I actually can't reveal them all. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Yeah, we've got to keep some things secret here. <laughs> when people get on, there might be some new stuff on there. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's talk about some of the integrations that we should be aware of. I mean, one of the big ones, we talk about internationalization and people wanting to get into multi-currency. Are you able to kind of share kind of where you fit now with multi-currency? And is there anything else that we should be aware of of those that want to try the Monster Upsell solution? This is a big one for Upsell apps. The reason why is because a lot of Upsell apps actually use what's called the draft checkout. Most of them, if you, if you go through all the top big ones, a lot of them use this thing called draft checkout, which is actually, it's a cheating way to basically do easy discounts on the checkout, basically. So what we've done is we just, we realized that when you use draft checkout, it was the easy solution for us to build our app around, but it didn't work with Shopify multi-currency. And that was like a big no-no for us because we want to build for like bigger brands. We want to build for brands that really care about this kind of stuff uh, and that want to expand overseas and things like that. So we literally, when we figured that out, we scrolled back like three, four months worth of work and built our backend again around the proper like Shopify checkout, which is a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. So you've got Shopify multi-currency in the checkout, which is awesome. Works really well, easy to use. Uh, you don't have to do anything. That's just <laughs> me t- talking about the back end. And then we've we've also got like, basically our app works any- with anything kind of post-purchase, like all the upsell solutions. We're also working on bringing in our subscription solutions as well. Right now, we're not quite there, but we're on the way. 
to getting subscription um, solutions in there as well. So any post solution, post purchase solutions like one click upsells, cart hook, those guys, they can do post purchase. We can do pre purchase, and we can just blow up your average order value. <laughs> I would also would add that I, you know I think there's a lot of stores that are doing post purchase upsells. I mean, Shopify I think released a couple different APIs last year. I guess you know in Q4 of last year, one was the subscription API. And now you see a lot of post purchase upsells. You see a lot of hype online saying, "Hey, they add this to the cart." And then I think it's called card vaulting and then so they so they actually have some of the credit card details and then you're able to maybe double up your order or the next one for 50 off or whatever kind of the incentive is more of a post purchase and you you know we talk about you know these one click up sales zipify and card hook and there's quite a few others order bump and different ones that are doing that sort of post purchase thing but that's different than what you're doing you're more of a pre purchase kind of upsell solution. So are you able to talk a little bit about that, about can you, the differences and why people would go one over the other? And like, like, what are your findings right now of kind of pre-purchase versus post-purchase? Yeah, sure. Look, to be honest, do both. Try them. It, as I said before, yeah, yeah, do test, test, test. That's what I said before. I'm not, I'm not saying my app is the only app you should ever use in your entire life, <laughs> but I am all about testing. And I, I reckon our app could crush for most stores <laughs> and do really well. Look, I've had these conversations with stores that use our product. And I was always wondering, I'm like, how's it going to work together? How's the post purchase and pre purchase? And look, to be honest, we've received a ton of feedback from stores that do use post-purchase and they say that pre-purchase just absolutely blows it out of the water. Like attribution, yeah, like we can add like 300% more than what they would be able to add post-purchase. I'm not saying don't do post-purchase, but all I'm saying is try the pre-purchase. And if you're going to do pre-purchase, as I said, as I've said a couple of times, be careful pre-purchase not to kill your conversion rates. Use an app that that just looks and feels good and gets you to the checkout really easily. So let's uh, dig into a, a merchant stories. I think stories resonate with a lot of people. Stories that stick is kind of a book that I read, I don't know, a couple months back. And it's so interesting to, you just kind of get that emotional feeling around, hey, why did people choose to use your solution? And kind of what sort of problem did the merchant have? Um, and then discovering your solution implementing your solution and then what happened i guess it's it's almost like a mini case study so it'd be great if you could share i guess one specific detail or one specific customer that you believe is notable and getting great value out of monster upsells today yeah for sure luca from be kind hopefully he's listening he's a legend i've actually built a friendship with one of the owners of be kind they're a really cool brand be kind dot shop i believe go check them out everybody but basically they they've got a epic mission like the they're helping give back and make raising awareness for the b world and yeah doing some really cool stuff in that space they were growing rapidly at the start of the year they were a jewelry they were growing rapidly they're doing really well their ads were just hitting and they were doing great with post-purchase upsells there's like five to ten percent of their revenue was coming from their post-purchase and they were stoked with that but they like and that's a good number five to ten percent increase in revenue when you're doing big numbers that's great but they just felt like there was something more in there. There was more room to grow. And that's so they started going out there and trying to find a good pre-purchase solution. They, they told me they tried a whole heap of... What did they try? Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, they tried a whole heap of different apps and they just never quite gelled. It didn't look good enough for their brand or they weren't getting the right results they were after. Look, they found us, Monster Ups. I was just through the Marketplace app store and I was on at the time when they downloaded the app <laughs> on the help chat and um so lucky to do that because then i got a good mate luca overseas and look i help him set up ad to unlock and free frequently bought together for his store it was just the first campaign we did and look i didn't really get to hear anything from after that he was, he was a great guy to chat to and then three days later i get a shopify email like they send you alerts and things and they, they send me this email and like you're waiting for these emails. They can be great or they can be like, hey, you got to fix this. And I'm like, looking at them, I'm like, I open my emails, I'm like, ah, oh, epic. It's like, it's a review email. I'm like, wow, review, sick. That's the best review you can have is, is you can have a good day if you get a good review. The lifeblood, go give reviews to everybody that, are, that kill it for you. Literally within the first 12 hours of turning on the app and optimizing upsells, we were able to boost our AOV by 20%. The best part is we only used one upsell solution and there's three. <laughs> we have lots more now. 
heaps more now, by the way, lots of other random features. But then it makes so much sense to offer your customers a few similar products that could be either an upgrade or just an add-on. You can tell the app is new and innovative. It works and it's optimized better than any other cart or app on the market. Be kind. And like pff, that, it still sends, it just sent shivers down my neck just then. <laughs> like that was, that was when we first started. That was like two, three months in. We got that and we're like, that put us on fire. The guys, the team, the developers were like, we got to keep building this. We got to get all this stuff out. But I don't know. Every time you guys send us a review, it just pumps us up. <laughs> Absolutely. No, and I think it just validates your mission, your mission. You know, and I think that's interesting because at the end of the day, you know, there's money being left on the table. And so it's proof, you know, and you can prove it for those listening today. And, you know, hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll be able to go in and, you know, give Monster Upsells a, a fair shake just to see what it can do. It's very clear. There's lots of brands that are getting tremendous value out of it. And uh, so I think I think it's certainly worth a test and to see that, man, because like getting that kind of like 20 percent increase in AOV, you know, think about. <laughs> but you probably, you're probably going to get emails saying, I wish I would have added it six months ago. It's crazy, man. Like the 20%, I, I can't promise 20%. <laughs> I've actually had stores get 30%. And I'm just like, what the heck? But I don't really tell anyone that because I can't, I really can't promise 30% to anyone. But anyway, it's, it's still a lift in revenue. And I think that's important. And then it's still all about building a community and it's on brand. It's non-spammy. There's no exit intense and all these kind of craziness, countdown timers and you know, just purchase kind of pop-ups. There's a lot of craziness going on in the market. You don't do it that way and you and you're very intentional and I and I appreciate that. So I'm gonna do one more pivot over to inside Shopify, as I mentioned, there's like so many different types of entrepreneurs, they're on different journeys, different complexities. And so knowing that and you know, and you obviously have a lot of e-commerce experience both as a marketer and helping other brands and now getting into the SaaS world and actually creating technology to help brands, you know, brands grow and scale. So Let's talk from your vantage point. Is there is there anything that you could give advice? I know this might be a little bit off topic, but I think you know store owners want to grow and scale, and maybe it's the use of your app. Maybe there's other different things. Just curious on what's what's on your mind today that you believe could be impactful to help brands grow and scale. The whole upsell world, it's people just think it's like they're just going to add upsells to their store and it's just going to explode. The fact of the matter is it, it doesn't always just happen that way. You know, like you've got to send a certain amount of traffic. You've got to really think about it. Like what's the perfect upsell? I just said it before, like test, 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 everything like that. But what, what I want to say is like upsells can grow your store faster, but beware, like they can actually decrease conversion rates if you're not doing it properly. That's one of the big things I want to touch on. And then the second thing is like focus as a store owner or a brand owner, focus on lifetime value. That's literally where you're going to get the most out of your business, right? If you've got a long-term goal of your business to maybe sell it one day, or if you're just trying to make a sustainable business that's going to last for years, you've got to think about the long-term, like lifetime value is where the money is made, if that's what you're after. But lifetime, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say it, but basically focus on lifetime value. How do you get sale three, four, five, and 10? Let's talk about the future for the product. I mean, you, you know, I'm not uh, necessarily asking for like a public roadmap, which I know you have, which we'll put that in the show notes. But I'm just always curious about kind of like the Monster Apps company and then the Monster Upsell solution. I just would love to share with the audience, maybe a North Star, I guess, for the remainder of 21. Or is there any other partner alignment or any innovation? Just end of the day, like how are you going to continue to iterate the product? What's the process? And because is there anything that you can uh, share with us what may be coming down the pipeline soon? It's pretty simple to us. We don't have some crazy, crazy thing that we're working towards. Like we're literally just going, let's build the best customer lifetime value upsell app in existence. That's the goal. Let's just do it. Whatever that takes. Like we've got a whole heap of plans that come out underneath that and branch out, but that's what we're after. That's a, that's a North Star, like you said before. How are we going to do this? Look, we're just going to listen to partners. That's our, that's our strategy. Listen to partners and listen to store owners. Get as close to them as we can. And obviously we, we get to see like how people are, are working on the back end and how, how people are using the app to its full advantage. And look, we just want to build community around that, I guess. We just activated a feature suggestion platform so we, we can let stores help guide our future updates. Um, I'm sure you've got a link you're going to put somewhere, the roadmap link that you were talking about. 
And look, I'm big on that. Let's let's let our customers or let's let the stores actually guide the future of the app. I love public roadmaps. I think uh, I think even Shopify has like a merchant frustrations kind of a tool that's available. And I think what's interesting is that it just like you just want to triage and know like well, like what's hot, what's new, what's what what are some of the challenges currently? Uh, do all themes work correctly with with the cart drawer, the Ajax drawer? You know, there's going to be some nuances that just like oh, we never thought about that, or that's interesting, or there could be other kind of customer experience more enterprise solutions that are out there in the market that they're doing this and you're like huh that's interesting and uh, i think there's lots of inspiration amongst other martech solutions out there and i think it's okay to to let people kind of pave the way a bit and then also your own customers help you think about what's next and so it's nice to have a public roadmap also nice to keep a few things you know close to the kimono so to speak knowing that you know other SaaS companies are listening you know to today's recording but at the end of the day i think we're all here about helping uh, the entrepreneurs in the shopify ecosystem i think that's the key it's just you know then that's the whole idea of democratizing entrepreneurship and that's what shopify is all about and hence the growth so let's talk about where people can go to learn more about you know uh, your company and this particular app yeah sure so you can just look us up on facebook i think you'll find us just typing in monster apps but then also just go into the Shopify app store and type in, type in monster upsells uh, and we'll be right there, ready to go. <laughs> All right, very cool. And I think you also have a, a website. You can go to monsterapps.shop and then I think that's more of your corporate website that kind of shows everything. I think a lot of the details that are there are available on the Shopify app store so you can kind of actually go and search there. And I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, we, there's been, or there's going to be a, a special kind of promotion available for those listening today are you able to share some of those details yeah so you can basically just download the app straight into shopify app store and try it for free for 10 days you can make a million dollars in those 10 days and we won't charge you a cent but yeah you should be able to pay for your app before you even use it that's one of the cool things about it and also a listener offer is available we're going to give um, everyone 10 percent off today if you go through the links that um steve's going to put in the show notes yeah, and that's pretty much it. The other thing I was going to say is if you are a partner, you can just download this app on any store for free and we we basically don't charge until it's actually been transferred over to the store owner. So yeah, you can have a play and do whatever you want there. The last thing that I want to ask before we sign off for today is so how is the product priced? Because I, I think that's always in a very interesting kind of conversation saying, great, we have this app and it's, it's, it's doing what it needs to do. It's helping increase average order value um, and it's helping increase conversion rate by getting these certain milestones hit and being able to add on products. So it does a lot of unique things. And so how does monster apps make money based on having this technology available to merchants? So yeah, basically it's, it's really simple. It's the way our pricing works. You can go onto our website and you can see it all there. So as you scale, so does just, we just charge as you scale. So zero to 50 store sales through your store, basically we're just charging $8, 51 to 200, $15. So it's really reasonable price. And look, there's actually a part in the dash, but it's kind of fun. It's probably gonna break one day. But what it is, is it tells you what your return on investment is, like a percentage revenue. And some stores, it's just insane. Like the numbers are too big. Look, it's just getting too big. So we're probably gonna have to fix that and replace that feature one day. But the return on investment is is huge for most stores. Yeah, and I'm looking in the admin right now of one of your stores, and yeah, it's very interesting what's what's being shown in your admin. I like the fact that there's live chat available from within, like support is available from within it, but it's just, it's very interesting what you're showing, how it goes and fetches your data, and there's some great onboarding. I have one brand that, I, uh, that I'm looking at, it's a, we haven't mentioned them yet, but you know, 157,000 carts have been displayed and over 10,000 sales generated, you know, and you can just see the lift, the overall cart conversion rate and the upsell generated and the total revenue of upsell totals there's a lot of great information in here you know how you set up and activate your cart how to create your first campaign i think this is well done the settings and the campaigns there's even a sticky cart option that's coming that's in beta right now so there's lots of interesting things it's actually out right now it's just in beta you can use it right now we don't have any problems with it go for it this is fantastic yeah this is lovely well i just wanted to thank you for you know ty coming on the show today i really appreciate it you have a very unique unique solution. I think a lot of people are just a little bit confused about upsells. They know it's important. They sometimes are just using it built into their theme or they've used other different apps. I think uh, you have a unique way from a brand perspective that's non-spammy. I just, I appreciate that. I love the Ajax cart drawer. I think it's very unique. 
kind of how it works and gives people the opportunity. Some of the biggest, baddest brands that I see on Shopify are using an Ajax cart and how it gives people the option to, to be able to upsell and, and similar products and just simple little things. You know, I, I even like having route listed, you know, for, for, for shipping or carbon offset and gift wrapping. And there's lots of really fun things you can do in the cart, which your app allows uh, that to happen. So I just wanted to thank you again for, for sharing. Thank you for being in the Shopify ecosystem and thanks for just giving back overall and helping brands uh, to grow and scale. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me on. Today's episode is brought to you by High Conversion Recommend, powered by Amazon Personalize. They help medium to large Shopify merchants boost engagement, increase conversions, and most importantly, grow new revenue with the same product recommendation AI that's used on Amazon.com. When your visitors can't quickly discover the right products, they leave and they'll go to a competitor or a big marketplace. And that kind of explains why on average, 90% of your online visitors never find a product or add an item to the shopping cart. Effective product discovery is a must have capability for all Shopify brands with 50 products or more in their catalog and ideally a million per year in revenue. High Conversion Recommend uses visitor actions, context, and Amazon's own recommendation algorithms to generate ultra-relevant personalized recommendations, most importantly, all in real time. So install High Conversion today and take them up on their offer. They have a seven-day product recommendation challenge. and They believe they can produce 100% more revenue per visitor in just one week with the use of Amazon's product recommendation algorithms. So head on over, highconversion.com, Mention e-commerce fast lane as a listener. You'll also get an exclusive 20% off their annual plan. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce fast lane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.